Hello, boys and ghouls. What the fuck is up? It's Sunday here, and it's really sunny. Therefore, I am very happy. If you do not know me, my name is Luis, but some of you may know me because of uh, my vocal duties in the grindcore band entitled Teething, and some of you may know me because I draw under the name Lucifer, but most of you and everybody knows me because of my beautiful, immature, brown, silly, very silly dog entitled Bingo. Anyways, enough about me, enough about Bingo, let's talk about Leon del Muerte, who fucks around with everything from his current bands Lightbreaker, Terrorizer LA, Murder Construct, Impaled to his former bands such as Exhumed, Phobia, Nails, Intranaut, Nausea, DIS, and he also um, does a lot of uh, recording engineering with Beastman Audio. But let me shut up so you can get along with this episode. Without further ado, please check out my conversation with Leon. Please enjoy. Dude, what's up? How's it going? <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> uh, sorry for all the goofiness there. <laughs> Not uh, at it's all. Still early in the morning here. I know. What well, it's ten a.m. Right. Yeah, so I guess it's not that early, um, but you know, uh, for me, in, for me in a pandemic, ten a.m. is <laughs> is is early. You so know, I I try to be a bit more professional, I guess. So like by nine, <laughs> I'm I'm already I'm already up and running at, at nine o'clock. Sure. So thanks a lot, dude. Um, and yeah, I I know you're supposed to be working right now, right? Yeah, so I just, uh, yeah, so normally my first meeting at work is at 10.15, so I'm up at about like 10.13 every day, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, I told them I wasn't going to make it, and they're like, oh, what are you doing, and I was like, ah, don't worry about it. You know? You're like, I'm on the Subway Rap podcast, come on. Man. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. They're like, oh, hell yeah, we'll be watching this shit all the time. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> so, um um yeah so thanks so much i thought your full-time job was a uh, beastman audio but no you're doing double duty yeah so my i have a regular day job which is uh, i work at a comp- company called dream host we do web hosting i've been there for uh shit it'll be 14 years this year um okay. i do project management with them i used to be the data center manager so I, that basically was like i would me and my team would build all the hardware and maintain all the hardware, like 6,000 servers. Um, and now I just like set up meetings and run meetings and do meetings and fucking meetings, meetings. and meetings, and meetings uh, you know. <laughs> That's all these meetings. All right, dude. Well, well, thank you for, for blocking a bit of your time from yeah. meetings no worries, for man. another meeting with me <laughs> yeah <laughs> still meeting so exactly you know. I so, it. so dude i want to start off with my favorite question in the world which is um talking about food okay oh hell yeah <laughs> okay so uh, i want to know do you prefer sweet or salty food mm. I'm going to say salty, but my wife would say sweet that I prefer sweet food because uh, I, I I like I sneak candy like all the time. Like I'm always like, you know, like, you know, we'll go to the, the you know, get gas or whatever. And I'll like swipe a candy bar or something like that and, and like hide it from her because um, I've gotten real fat in the pandemic. So I think know. we're all good to that. All good, dude. Oh, yeah <laughs> but what? i think in general yeah like and, and like super salty stuff too like I, I i i think i might have like a bit of a problem there <laughs> with like because i'll be like putting salt in my shit and then i'll just be like fuck it. <laughs> so when your wife turns around you'll sneak in a candy bar and extra salt in your yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm just the worst just so sneaky all the time about everything <laughs> exactly dude you know what i miss I didn't realize, you know, like it's COVID. We all miss like playing shows, touring and all that. But yeah. I didn't realize how, how much I miss like gasoline stations, you know? Oh yeah, right. Sure, because you would see like on tour, you know, you see one like twice a day. 
and then you know you're just like you walk in there and it's like oh this is like you you know you could be like in the middle of alabama maybe like somebody would have like homemade beef jerky or something or or like whatever like some shit you're like you know salted nuts or whatever you're just like buy one of everything like in there (laughs) are you known for stealing once in a while in gasoline stations (laughs) not not in like the last uh, maybe not in the last like decade but that used to be my thing I, I, I don't know why like I was always do well I, I do know why it's because like you know my early tours we were broke as shit so you know I, I would try to steal right in front of the cashier like I put my hand on like a candy bar and then just kind of like slip it into my hoodie like you know like yeah, yeah, it, yeah. like into my sleeve and, or, and shit like I don't know why I was like and it's not like I was bragging about it to anybody else. Like I was kind of embarrassed, but I just also was all like, fuck this, I'm hungry. You got you know? the rush. Yeah, it's <laughs> your your own personal rush. So so go okay. So so you would say salty, your wife would say sweet. What's your <laughs> since we're talking to you, what's your like that one say this was your last day on earth and anyone yeah. in the world could prepare the ultimate dish for you? What would that salty dish be? It could be even if you needed to like resurrect your grandma or something. Yeah, yeah right. Um, shit. Uh, my last dish. Um, hmm. I'm torn between like a steak or ramen. Uh, like Ooh. ramen is kind of like what my there's a there's a ramen place here in Portland. I always take everybody who comes and stays here at the house. Like I always take them to this ramen place. It is like it's my favorite place to eat on earth there's there's a there's a bunch of i have like ramen places all over the west coast that i'm like when i'm in la i know exactly where i'm going when i'm Excellent. here i go here blah 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 um so i don't know I'm, today i'm feeling like ramen uh and i probably <laughs> ought to cut back on the beef so even though i'm gonna die you know it's my last <laughs> day I, I i think i'll go for the ramen <laughs> extra beef extra beef ramen, yeah <laughs> Dude, that's awesome because I was late to the game with ramen. I started um, dating my girlfriend, Sarah, three years ago. And she mm-hmm. was like, we should get ramen. And I'm like, I've never had ramen. So she, Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was like this whole ad- amazing adventure. She told me like the whole myth behind it, um, <laughs> the whole tradition. Sure. And I'm totally in love with it, especially because I don't know what it's like. Yeah, they're on... Actually, I do know what it's like on the West Coast because last time I was there, we, we had a lot of like pho and ramen. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Fuck yeah. And uh, what I like about ramen is you get a big bowl with at least like 10 ingredients and usually, and it's usually like well, well priced, you know? So I like, right. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I got it's my like money. really good tour food like pho and, and ramen are like I, I mean I, I I tend to like extremely spicy food like like extremely spicy um but I don't do that on tour because I don't want to you know yeah. mix spicy and drinking and shit my pants on stage or something um but like it's if you go like you know not so spicy on on either of those foods it's like a really good tour food like it's you know, you, you rehydrate, you get all, you know, if you, especially if you drink a ton of beer and stuff, you know, you're all dehydrated. It's like, oh, you get to rehydrate with the ramen or the pho. <laughs> it's economical, you know, it's like you can get a fucking like a boiled drum of full of pho for like six bucks. So, you know, it's, it's a perf- almost perfect tour food other it than is. you can't eat it in the van. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's just, just anything extremely warm. It just feels that it just feels like you're at home for a bit. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. All right. Like it brings you back for for a moment. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So we're going for ramen. Okay. Yeah. So um. Oh, and you want to shout out the that uh place in in Portland? What's the name? Yeah, it's called Ko's Ramen Bar. They're like the only business I follow on Instagram. <laughs> like, I'm always like liking on all their pictures and shit, and they're always posting like, you know, oh, we're doing this tonight. And I'm like, oh yeah, hell yeah, I'm gonna be there. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Is it like um? Is it like a 10 minute drive from your place or is it like, uh, can you? No, it's kind of on the, across town. It's sort of a, it's sort of a little bit of a hike for me. Um, when I, when I first moved here getting it's like five and a half years ago, I just like, I kind of like made a mental list of all the ramen places to go check out. And, and I basically have eaten at almost all of them. 
uh, not just the ones that were in my mental list, but like all of them, all of them, because nice. I'm such a, you know, fucking fanatic about it. Um, and that one was, there was a couple that were like pretty good. And, and chaos was just like, they have uh, the, the one thing they have that, well, the, the thing they have on their menu that I love is this, it's called mala ramen. It's made with mala peppers nice. and mala peppers kind of numb your face when you eat. It's like <laughs> eating a bag of Coke or something. <laughs> so like, it's a, it's there, there. It's very, it's a very weird sensation to have your mouth start going numb, but it's all, they, they will make it so spicy that it's like, you can order it, you know, regular, medium, hot, and super hot. And the super hot is like perfect for me. Dude, have have you ever had like I just experienced this recently, which is like spicy hangover. No. Dude, a spice it's, tea hangover? No, 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 no. Like from eating so much spicy food. Oh, oh a spicy hangover. Like you're hung over the next day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've I mean, I've had it where like under certain conditions that I haven't totally felt out what it is where like if I eat something super sp every now and again and I think it's if I'm like on a dead empty stomach or something if I eat something that's really re I'll get like kind of like a little fucked up like like kind of I don't, I don't know like a little dizzy a little like just kind of like out of it feeling like in my guts just all like fuck you dude and uh I, okay I don't so know, you, you suffered from the it. spicy hangover yeah hangover. like immediate though like <laughs> oh, okay it's immediate me it's like no the next morning i'm like Ugh. oh the next day is always a disaster yeah yeah, yeah. especially when yeah. you gotta you know get to the bathroom <laughs> exactly <laughs> dude and about see we i i, I can see us rambling on a little about food so so about cow's yeah. ramen bar um i did a road trip on the west coast a couple of years ago and um mm -hmm. as i'm growing up i i was like i'm like i already have 120 band shirts so i'm gonna start like switching it up so what i do now is like restaurants i like that that's like my new merchandise you know yeah yeah totally so, like, I, this, i'm with that <laughs> this cow do you rock a cow's ramen bar shirt I, sh I really should actually. I said, next time I go over to Chaos, I'm going to grab a shirt. I, I you know, I, I, I started wearing, well, I'm like wearing a band shirt right now, but I'm trying to, trying to get, not so much get away from it, but like, um, I don't know. It's just like, uh, I, like, like you said, like, you know, you got like 120, I probably have about the same amount of like black t shirts with a white logo exactly. on them, you know? So like, and, and there's nothing wrong with it or anything, but, um, but I mean, that's like a, tried and true look that everybody you know i see you rocking a red and stimpy shirt and i'm trying to get like yeah it is into some other shit too or yeah you know, just now that i'm not like i used to be like really embarrassed about the dorky things i was into <laughs> and so i didn't want to advertise that shit you know but now i'm like oh, whatever i'm fucking 40 i can do whatever the fuck i want you know? there you go all right so so last meal on earth is uh ramen and you're gonna buy that shirt yeah yeah, okay. and I'm going to be buried in it, too. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> okay, so next off, we're going to still talk about food, uh, but we're going to do a lightning round. So I'm going to right. I want, you to, I want you to answer as quick as possible. So okay. haagen or Ben & Jerry's? Ben & Jerry's. Nice. Do you have a favorite uh, flavor? Uh, Chunky Monkey. Fuck yeah. Uh, <laughs> or, uh, chubby hubby, excuse me. Chubby hubby, not chunky monkey. Shit. Chubby hubby. Okay. okay. Uh, spaghetti <laughs> or macaroni? Ooh. Um, spaghetti. <laughs> okay. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich or pancakes? Pancakes. And that's a recent hate. Okay. What, what about like with the peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Would you like put chips in that or anything like gross? Uh, gross. <laughs> yeah. uh, man, it's been a long time since I've had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Um, I do like, I love peanut butter. Uh, so that, that was, I was like, well, I'll, I'll take it. But uh, my wife has kind of trained me to, to get into breakfast food. I was never into it before. Okay. And we've been eating, we got a waffle maker and shit. And nice. we're like, yeah, we're, we're eating pancakes and waffles and shit now. So. Um, I don't know, like a big, big breakfasts before were kind of like, I don't like it. Literally, it literally would make me feel like gaggy and pukey, like oh god. But now it's like we go out, we get like you know 
bacon and sausages and pancakes and shit and, and eggs, mimosas and, and, and yeah. Do, yeah yeah the whole the whole okay. you know the I american version shit. of the english breakfast i love that shit dude um yeah when i did that uh west coast road trip with my girlfriend that was our yeah. thing we just get like huge breakfast and we <laughs> we'd get we wouldn't be hungry for lunchtime so we we'd just save all of that money yeah anyway. sure <laughs> okay we so, ready to go like all day <laughs> exactly so next question sushi or ramen i think we know the answer ramen yeah that's yeah. a that's a yeah ramen for sure for sure <laughs> okay <laughs> oatmeal cookies or chocolate chip cookies chocolate chip fuck yeah um <laughs> breakfast or midnight snack Ooh. um i've been off the midnight snack for a bit so i'm gonna go i'm kind of tentatively leaning towards breakfast right now okay nice <laughs> tacos or nachos tacos nice for sure yeah okay last one salty breakfast or sweet breakfast Ooh. i don't know my favorite part of the the big breakfast is the sausage so in the bacon so i'm gonna say salty breakfast okay and that's all that's the end of our podcast <laughs> <laughs> all right later <laughs> Bye. okay dude so i want to ask you a bit about um how this last year has been you know i know it's a cliche answer but i think it's also important um how it's uh how it's changed for the better and for the worse like what well, uh, how are you doing? Yeah, it's it's been, I mean, it's been a weird one. You know, I really, really miss playing shows and going to shows, of course, like, you know, like everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have, you know, like I, I what I can remember, Kitty's oh, joining me. Um, <laughs> what I can remember my dreams, you know, it's like they're lately they've been at like, they've been so boring, like being posted up at a bar, watching a shitty local band or something. <laughs> like, that's what I dream about now. Like, I miss it so much. Like, I just have these boring dreams of just talking shit at a bar and drinking a beer, you know? Um, I, this year, I've, I've spent a lot of time and money on the studio in here, and that's been good. Like, I, I'm fully equipped to record pretty much everything but drums in here at this point and put out like good sounding stuff. Um, so I, I love that. That's been really fun. And that's kind of a homebody thing to be into is just being in your studio, fucking with your, you know, buying shit and wasting your money on this stuff. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, like I said, like I, I haven't in July or June or July, I forget which one it is. It'll have been like two years since I played a show. And that is fucking crazy. Like, I can't believe it's been that long. It doesn't feel like it's been that long, but it's, it, I mean, it verifiably has been. So I don't know. It's, I, I, I really just want to like, I'm not like, I'm not an anti-masker. I'm not like, if I'm not, I'm not with rushing the rollout. I think we should take our time and make sure it's good and fucking, you know, everybody's safe and happy and whatever. But God damn, I want to fucking play a show. I just want to be at a show. I'll, I'll watch a fucking new metal band. I don't care. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, I'll watch all the local bands that I sat at the bar talking shit about over my the course of my band. entire career. <laughs> you know, any band. <laughs> and um, what was the last show you played? With who? Uh, it was with Nails. It was in... It was in like Indiana or something. It was like in like some fucking butthole state that it wasn't even like a good show. Like it was, it was like one of the worst shows that it wasn't a bad show, but it wasn't like a good show. Right. Um, and yeah, it was, it was just so long ago. I can't believe it's been that long, but I was, I was at a show when in Mexico, I was at the total death over Mexico thing when they locked when they shut down the borders and I was like, Oh shit, I might have some trouble getting back. Uh, they shut the borders in the U S officially on March 16th. And then my flight back was on March 17th. And, uh, I was like kind of freaking out, but I, I, you've probably been to the airport in Mexico, the Mexico I city have, airport. I have not been to that airport. Oh, really? Oh, okay. It's the biggest fucking airport 
Like it is so massive and it's like so sprawling and it's fucking hard to navigate. I want to say like they have like two terminal ones. One's like international terminal one, and then there's like domestic terminal one. So it's really confusing. I always get it's fucked insane. up when I go back to it. And so I was like, I was kind of lost, but it was empty. And it's the first time I'd, I've been there like, I don't know, like half a dozen, somewhere between a half a dozen and a dozen times. And like, it was the first time I've ever, there's usually probably like, you know, a small city's worth of people there at any given time. And it was like empty. And, uh, you know, I'm walking around asking people in my bad Spanish where the fucking gate is and stuff. And this guy's like telling me, you're in the wrong fucking terminal, idiot. And I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, I, I got on the plane. Uh, I flew next to this old Karen who was like, <laughs> at some point, like she was, she was complaining, like, there was some kid who was playing on a switch behind us and she's like turned around she's like no mas ruido and i was just like oh my god like shut up and then uh on my second flight we landed in salt lake city and then i had a flight from salt lake city to portland and uh like that flight was empty there was like 10 people on it the, the airport was empty like i just i got off and it was like suddenly like i was alone it was like it's like a weird bad dream you know like i'm in an airport alone i'm hungry and i'm scared and shit you know? fun, fun, so, yeah but um, it was i mean it turned out to be like the easiest like you know connection home like i just once i found my terminal in mexico i was just like was, a, another weird thing happened actually in mexico uh i was i was standing in line to fly to, to fly back uh, and also in line was this chick wearing an intronaut shirt. And that's a band I used to be in. And I, I didn't, right. I saw the shirt and I was like, oh, interesting. And then I, I didn't want to say anything, but I couldn't just let it go. And I was like, I, I was like, I was like, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be like a fucking weirdo, but uh, I used to be in that band. And she was like, oh, uh, what did you do? And I was like, I play guitar. And she was like, oh, so you must have, Dave must have been your replacement. And I was like, that's a really like okay yeah 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 Dave was my replacement and then uh so I talked just chit chat for a minute she's like uh and I was like oh she's like what's your name and I was like I'm Leon I was like what's your name she's like I'm Emma and I was like okay and then I got on the plane and I sat down and then I realized oh shit that was Emma Ruth Rundle she had just gotten off tour with Intronaut wow. and I was like oh fuck oh, <laughs> so that was yeah that was March 16th March 17th rather like on my flight back from Mexico as I met Emma Ruth Rundle because she was wearing oh. an Intronaut shirt because yeah. uh, I'm not I, I see her name all the time but I'm guessing she's right. you right yeah, I think so. Like, I'm not like super, super familiar either. But like, yeah, I think she's like, a, you know, an up and comer. So she's, she's definitely doing big things. I was like, Oh, that's fucking I was like texted Sasha. I was like, I think I, I Sasha from Intranet. And mm -hmm. I was like, I think, I think I just ran into Emma Ruth. And he's like, Yeah, you did. She just texted me and told me she was she was like asking me, you know, that I was like, I'm, you know, I'm glad she texted you. So she could prove like I wasn't just some weird random like a guy in the airport i'll try to chat her up or something you know? nice dude talking about internet uh the guitarist antonio in teething is a huge internet fan but from your era he he, he oh. <laughs> he's always like i told him i was going to be talking to you he was like yo tell that guy like he, he started like uh fanboying on me he's like yeah he brought the thrash element that internet lacks now Fuck it, not now, bro. Oh shit! He's always like, <laughs> he's always wearing uh like an old school intranet shirt. It's oh, like no one shit. of those shirts that's like fucking like what? It's a black shirt, but by now it's like beige. Great, it's, yeah. Like, hold on, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, right. <laughs> so fuck yeah, dude. And um, oh, that's rad. <laughs> yeah, and um. So we're, we're going to get talking about all of your bands, but um, sure. I wanted to talk about like, cause uh, a week or two ago, you sent me a picture of your guitar case and it had a teething sticker on it. Yeah. And that blew me away. Cause I was like, how did a teething sticker get all the way to Portland? <laughs> so I, well, actually I got it in the Czech Republic. Uh, you guys old guitar player, Daniel, or uh, Daniel, excuse me. Um, uh, Daniel, uh, oh, I don't want to put it. Yeah, Maganto, there we go. Yeah, great guy. We had a long ass conversation at uh, Obscene Extreme uh, about like band, like we were in the same kind of Secret Chiefs and a Stratosphere and stuff like that. And um, yeah, he gave me a sticker and I was just like, just like right there and there, just put it right on. So that's why it's all lopsided and shit nice. too. 
<laughs> Dude, parentheses, I love, like, high five to you, because I love whenever someone does the sticker thing, they'll go, <laughs> and just the sound whenever you, yeah. that's, the, that's the sound that that's sticker. That's the only appropriate sticker <laughs> placement sound, you know, I think. There you go. Dude, I wasn't aware you were at uh, Obscene Extreme that year. Who were you playing with? Uh, I played with Terrorizer LA. We played, um, yeah, we played right before Pig Destroyer. I remember because Pig Destroyer like came in and, and they didn't have like all of their shit got lost at the airport. That's so right. Scott Hall was like, he's like, dude, can I borrow your everything? <laughs> and I was just like, sure. yeah, man, everything. go for it. <laughs> so you didn't even unplug. It was like, there you go. Yeah, right. It's like, you just like, you know <laughs> here's my uh pick and everything yeah and um, yeah that was a like a cool ass tour. that was a really fun tour but yeah, i assume we'll get there <laughs> yeah yeah but um yeah we're gonna get there we're gonna we're gonna cover but uh, since we're already on the terrorizer um conversation right um i, I didn't realize i thought that was a one-off but that was a, a full-on tour yeah we did it was like 10 days or something um so we, so Terrorizer did like started as just, it was just supposed to be a one-off thing. Like we played uh, a festival in, um, in LA. So Jesse Pintado's sister had asked Oscar if, if Oscar would put together a, a terrorize, a lineup for Terrorizer and play this festival that they were putting on. And um, so we did that. We, we did the, you know, he, well, Oscar was just like, I was like, dude, can you put to, put together? He's like, I don't know anybody. Like, can you just put this together and, was, and learn the songs? And I was like, yeah, man, yeah, fuck it. That's, that's cool. So we, like, in a really short amount of time, we went through, like, three drummers and, like, you know, a couple rhythm guitar players and stuff. And um, we ended up playing. It was, it was Oscar on vocals, obviously. Uh, I was playing guitar. Uh, Rick from Sadistic Intent was playing guitar. Uh, Cosmo, who's like an OG terrorizer guest, like he used to come up on stage and do songs with them. Uh, back in the day, he was playing bass. And then uh, this dude, Mike, uh, from the band Dreaming Dead, he was playing drums. And so after that, um, like as soon as that show happened, we, I mean, we had like a month to learn those songs. It was so late in the game. And uh, so we only actually got through like 12 of the 16 songs on World Downfall. And um, like, but immediately after I started getting emails, people are like, hey, we're doing this festival. Like, would you guys play this? And and uh, Luke and Luke from um, Doomstar. Uh, Doomstar Booking. Yeah. They were like, are you guys interested in coming to Europe? And we're like, fuck yeah. And uh, Rick couldn't go. We'd play a couple more shows with Rick, uh, Badass Weekend in Texas and a couple others. And uh, we played up here in Portland. Actually, that was our second show um but rick couldn't go to europe so we're like fuck we'll just do the four piece thing one guitar one which i've never done i've never been the only guitar player in a band i was fucking nervous those songs are not like you know difficult but they're legendary and so right. you know you don't want to fuck them up <laughs> and, and it's like and i did i did i, I fucked up really bad at obscene stream it was like at the very end we're finally playing dead shall rise da -da, da -da, da -da, eh, and i just ring out on that bad note yeah, it was so embarrassing, and I was like, that was my biggest. I mean, and I fucked. I, I was, I was actually nervous. Like, I have, I, I, I don't usually get very nervous. Like, I'm not like a nervy. I, I get, I still have a like, I get hyped up, and I'm like ready when I'm like when the show is good and everything. But I don't usually get like very nervous, and I was fucking nervous at that show, just looking out at like, you know, that stage is yeah. big. There's fucking like. At, at least like five, six, maybe like 10,000 people out there. Fucking and then I'm about to play these fucking songs that everybody knows every single fucking note of. And I'm like, I start like freezing up, like, oh, fuck, dude. Oh, God, I suck. Like, oh, I can't do this. You know, but and we got through most of it pretty good. But yeah, I did fuck up. I had to ring out that wrong note. And you could see everybody on stage, like, look straight over at me. And I just saw, I, uh, fuck whatever. Well, that just didn't ring a bell. I saw that show, and it, you guys, you guys fucking killed it. So, my uh, my thanks, recollection of that is you didn't fuck up. So, rad. Right. So I wasn't aware you kind of put everything together. 
for a terrorizer LA. I mean, I don't want to, you know, take all the credit. Like, it, you know, Oscar wrote those fucking songs and shit. Yeah. So, um, but, but kind of like, he was just like, you know, he kind of let me take the lead because he was like, you know, more people in the scene right now and you know who could handle this. And, you know, the, the drumming was like the big thing, of course. It's like, you know, most people could play that stuff on guitar and bass. Um, but the drumming is so out of control. It's like getting the right drummer was, right. was uh, you know, kind of crucial. And Mike uh, is a great drummer and he was, he was with us for a while and like then he couldn't do a show with us also uh, up here in Portland. And um, if you're familiar with the band Cartilage, their drummer, Adam, right. he'd been hitting me up and he had told me at some point, he's like, hey, if Mike ever can't play a show, let me know. I know all those fucking songs by heart. And so I was like, we had, again, we had like a month before the show and I hit up Adam and I was like, 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 dude, uh, Mike can't get to the show. Like, uh, what are you doing? And he was like, oh, I'm good to go, man. And I was like, all right. So he starts, I was like, he's like, what's the set list? I was like, just play World Downfall. Like, that's the set list. We're playing it in order, fucking song one through song 16 you know, just learn the set like that. He's like, all right, cool. He said, I was like, can you send me some videos? And like, cause I kind of was like, he's, Adam's really young. And when, when he started playing with us, he was like 22. And I mean, you know, Oscar's in his fifties, I'm 40 something, Cosmo's 40 something. Right. And like, so, you know, we have a bunch of dudes in the band that were like twice Adam's age. <laughs> and so I was like, I didn't, that wasn't that I didn't trust him. But I was like, I just want to see your progress. You know, I, I would be irresponsible if I didn't. And he was sending me videos. And uh, we had one rehearsal with him and then we played the show the next day and he fucking like just killed it. He was so good, nice. so fast. Like there was some, there's parts of that set that like, like are, re are really difficult to down pick like the whole thing on guitar. And he was playing it so fast. I was like, turned around, I was like, fuck it out, relax, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> so he, so he, he like, I mean, that we played that set in like, it was like world downfall, but on 45 or something. Like it was like, it was, it was so fucking fast. And then like, we had to tell him eventually, I was like, dude, you got to chill just, just a little bit, like just take it down like one notch. So he was like, all right, I'm going to start, you know, one foot in all these blasts. I'm going to just do it just like Pete. And he was still too fast. I was like, God damn, this kid is so good. So that's, he's a, I mean, we haven't played a show in like three or four years at this point, but uh, you know, if we ever do, he's, he's the guy. So. Were there plans on playing more shows? Yeah. I mean, we've played up until we, we, the last show we played was in LA, like maybe it was like three years ago. It was, um, we opened up for doom. So that was, it was uh, nausea played too. So, so Oscar did double duty. So it was, it was nausea, Sissy SpaceX, uh, terrorizer doom which is a fucking sick show it was like at this place called the echo plex and it was i don't know if it was sold out but it was big it was a big fucking show it was kids were fucking just ready to go it was fucking it was like one of the best like best shows i've ever played so nice. were, awesome. <laughs> were you playing in nausea at the time no so i that it was um i i i basically had to i didn't really want to leave nausea but they like it was it would be too hard for me to fly back and forth right. to play with them because they play a lot like they or not a lot but they play often enough that it would be it would just end up costing me too much to fly back so I had to like begrudgingly quit nausea when right. I moved up here so I mean I would I would 100% play with nausea again any any fucking day but um yeah not not I mean I haven't played with them in in it's been like six years at this point or something Gotcha. I can imagine some of the cooler, bigger shows you've played have been with Terrorizer LA or, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most of the Terrorizer, I mean, we, we tried not to make the show, like, try not to make it like, so we're like, you know, we're not, we weren't, I, I bet we weren't asking as much as the other Terrorizer is. I'll put it that way. <laughs> okay. Um, probably, you know, we were just like, yeah, if you, you know, well, like how much are you offer and be like, all right, if you pay for the flights and this and that, then okay, we'll do it. Fuck it. You know, whatever. So we, we didn't say no to a whole lot. Um, Easy. Yeah. So we, yeah, we're just like, we just wanted to play and fucking, you know, just kind of strike while the iron was hot. Like, you know, people were asking. And so we were just, we were saying yes to almost everything. So, you know, there's a couple we probably shouldn't have. We played a show in, in, in a, 
man, I, like, I don't know. It was like somewhere in Orange County where this dude was like, I, you know, I had a kind of a specific thing where I have two amps. So it's like, I would turn one off. So it'd be like the record. It would sound just like the record basically. So, cause the rhythm guitars both play the same thing. And um, so I would just like turn one off on the brakes and then turn it back on and make it sound cool. And like the guy's like, I don't know anything about no amp. And then at the end, he was like, I don't got any money either. And I was like, yeah, all right. Like, this is bullshit. But, you know, <laughs> okay. well, actually, he was like, I got, he's like, I'm going to pay these other bands. I'm like, he's all pay, I'll pay you later. And he never paid us. He's like, yeah. Like, uh, oh, well. But, you know, it's, I mean, you know, when you're, when you're just trying to get out there and fucking play, that happens. You know? And did that ever work out with Luke with Doomstar? Cause, yeah, it was great with Luke. Fucking, um, we had a we had, it was weird when we when we did that tour like um Greece, we played in Greece and Greece was going through that austerity shit well in the weekend that we got there um like all the banks were shut down all the ATMs were shut down and, and uh the guys were like they're really up front when they got they picked us up at the airport they're like look we can't pay you today we promise we will pay you um and Luke was just like Luke was like, I'm going to give you guys the money for the show. And he's like, I trust these guys. They'll pay me back. And, and they did. So like, they were totally, it was, and it was worth it. The shows in Greece were fucking, in, like we played in Thessaloniki and we played in um, Athens and both those shows were fucking like, like just people were so fucking, especially in Thessaloniki, people were so fucking psyched to see Terrorizer. Like there was like, dude, like just dudes stage potatoing, just fucking singing the whole song <laughs> word for word. And then they come over and air guitar, the guitar parts, just standing right in front of me and just like, yo, dude, fucking relax, bro. <laughs> <You know? laughs> dude, that's such, a, I've never heard that expression. That's, I'm going to steal that stage potatoing. Great, you know when you got the guy who's just standing <laughs> on the stage <laughs> fucking <laughs> yeah. you're just like you're gonna jump off you're gonna be here yeah right yeah, he's just like, there to hang out he's just he's <laughs> with the band you know he's cool. yeah it's one of us dude. dude so continuing with the like with the grinding bands let's talk a little bit about phobia because phobia is one of like my favorite uh grindcore bands of all time so, sure um if i recall um you've from what period to what period were you with Phobia? I think you did three or four records with them. I did. Uh, I did like a fucking shitload of splits and stuff. Like we recorded a lot with, like the second I, I started playing with them, we started recording shit. Like fucking, I only think I did two records, uh, 22 Random Acts of Violence and uh, Life was God. The, okay, yeah. I think you did yeah. the Gadget split. The God, Gadget Split, Extinction of Mankind Split. Um, there's a, there's so many splits. Like, we just, like, do from day one, it was like, Shane's like, yeah, we're going to fucking go to the studio, start recording, like, fucking tomorrow, so just get your shit together. <laughs> like, all right, fucking, uh, I, guess, I guess we're doing this. Okay. You know? <laughs> and, like, when Phobia, that was more of, like, a sleeping on couches, punk vibe going on? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I mean, you know, we like that yeah which i mean all of my bands to, to that point had been like that so like even with exhum and stuff like we weren't staying in hotels like you know we would sleep in the van half the time right. um but uh but yeah it was yeah i mean we st definitely stayed in a lot of squats and some you know like even well actually the, normally staying at the squats was fine staying at some of the punk houses we stayed at that was a little fucking sketchy i definitely got some fucking itchy bits on me still from back then but yeah <laughs> so you know uh but it was fun like that was that shit was that shit was 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 really fun like um you know shane's kind of a controversial figure but um yeah i wanted you know, to ask you about how, how is it like working with shane you know me and shane got along pretty well there's only one time that he ever like you know, was going to punch me out. And that was um, <laughs> when uh, we were, we were like in New York, like waiting for a promoter to show up. This is like, we were like, I don't know, like on Staten Island or some fucking thing. Like it was like, it was going to not be a good show. And we were sitting around there like, I, I have this weird thing and you could ask like fucking Harv from Exhumed or anybody I've ever been to New York with. And they'll, they'll be like, dude, Leon is the worst when he's in New York because I want to eat all the food. I want to go to the fucking like the Jewish delis, get pickles. Yeah. Want to fucking, you know, I want to find all the fucking like every New Yorkie. I want to get the fucking, you know, the cheese 
or the cheesecakes and shit. Like I just, I want to do all that New York shit when I'm there. So um, like we're sitting around for like three hours in a parking lot waiting for this dude to show up. And I'm like, let's just fucking go. And like Shane's just like fucking, he's like, shut the fuck up. We're going to wait until the guy shows up. And it's like, the guy never shows up. So we finally left after like four. He was like, he wanted to play in the fucking, he was like, fuck it. We'll just play in the parking lot. He's like, you know, he, he, he was, he's very devoted to phobia fans. So, right. and I'm just like, I, I'm just like, all I can think about is pickles, pickles. and shit. So I was just like, <laughs> you know, that's all I care about. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, it's like working with Shane, like, you know, we, we got along fine. He's got some, you know, definitely some shit that we don't see eye to eye on for sure. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, Shane uh, never treated me wrong. So, I, I mean, I've seen him treat other people wrong. So, you know, there is that. But, uh, you know, and, me and him got along. Nice. And and why did you guys uh, take separate paths? What, what happened there? Well, first and foremost i was playing bass like it, it was and it's my own fault actually so the the day i met shane which was the day after i moved to la so i would have been like 16 years ago oh in, in like september not today 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 is the 30th anniversary of me moving to the west 31st anniversary of me moving to the west coast but um uh but what the day i met shane was at like a festival in la and he was like he's like hey you're that fucking dude from exhum all right uh we're going to kick out our guitar player and you're going to fucking play guitar. And I was like, okay. I was like, you can't kick out Steve. He's the fucking OG dude. And that was before I met Steve. And then when I met and played with him, I was like, fuck, this guy sucks. And um, he's like, he's a pain in the ass. He's a terrible guitar player. Like, Oh, I should, I'm talking a bunch of shit right now. Um, <laughs> oh, good, dude. <laughs> he, he was, I mean, he's just a grumpy fucking dude and he's hard to be around. And, and, uh, and I was like, man, fuck. So I settled for playing bass and it's like, I just didn't, I'm, I'm not a bass player. I gotta fucking know. I just play bass like a guitar and then also playing bass. Like I care even less about what I'm doing. So I'm just like nah. throwing the fucking thing around. Just, yeah. Just like, yeah, whatever, dude. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, I I had moved on to I like fucking what Shane would probably call nerd music and I like to fucking play nerdy shit and like a little little more challenging stuff and mm -hmm. uh, I mean grindcore is a thing that'll always be very near and dear to my heart and uh, playing you know simple fast songs is, will always be a thing that I'm into but uh, you know Phobia has like a rotating cast of people and they don't need me and yeah, you know, it was you know they it wasn't it wasn't like it was like it wasn't like goodbye forever. It was just like yeah, all right, I'm doing my thing now. You do yours, blah blah blah. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, that that makes sense. And and this is a perfect segue to talk about more nerdy stuff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because let's talk about Lightbreaker because I feel like that's uh, your baby, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm almost embarrassed to talk about it because it's like it's something I've been working on for so long, and like there's been no out put whatsoever other than like a three minute teaser i put out like two years ago um it's like it's it's a record that's been done for it's, it's not done it's actually not totally done uh I, it's wait waiting for my wife to finish her vocals and the one other vocalist to finish their stuff uh it's taxis and my wife's an accountant so it's it's kind of hard for her to break away and finish her shit up she also was dealing with like a, this huge thing where a company one of her clients like merged with another company and she had to do all of that like she was the gotcha. did, did the merger you know <laughs> so uh uh so it's it's really really close to being done it's 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 just kind of me doing flexing a little bit different musical muscle like trying to you know there's like a, a lot of like orchestral stuff and I, I started studying like actually studying guitar like back when I was still in LA I uh, studied with this guy, Jason Schimmel, was like doing theory and stuff like that. And, and try to, because I realized that back then, um, like I was like, man, I've been playing guitar at, at the time, like eight years ago for like 20 something years. I was like, I fucking feel like I suck for having played and I really want to start focusing on my playing and just like unlearning really bad habits and stuff. And then I moved here and I studied uh, another uh, with Sybil Grace here. And she's just like a the super shredder. She's like this incredible guitar player. She was like showing me all these techniques for, you know, because I was like playing like a fucking caveman, like <laughs> trying to crush my guitar while I'm playing. And she's like, you, you're never going to play fat. Like, I, like on day one, I went over to start studying with her. 
And she's like, here, just run the scale and just keep running it faster, faster, faster until you start fucking up. And so I'm playing the scale. And she's like, all right, you're about 360 BPM. And I was like, I'm feeling like, yeah, you don't, you know, you probably don't <laughs> see that every day. Fucking three. And she was like, well, actually, uh, she's like, you know, you're, you're kind of like, like, like shredder is like 600 BPM and like your virtuoso is like 1200 BPM. Like she's like 360 is like, it was pretty whatever. And I was like, actually, god damn, yeah. Like, god damn. All right. So, you know, she didn't mince her words with me at all. She just was like, you're bad at this. I need you to start doing it like this. And so I'm still like, you know, I haven't been taking lessons anymore, but like, I still am trying to learn how to just like, like have better techniques. I don't ruin my hands. Like it, it, at this this point, it takes me like an hour to warm up. You know, my hands are kind of fucked wow. up from bad technique. So, you know, it's, it's, it's important to, I, I mean, I sound like the oldest fucking fart ever right now, but like, <laughs> it's really, it is really important to like, just not abuse your hands. If you want to fucking play guitar into your, 50s and shit you know dude, dude something that that for sure like something that um caught my eye was um when you were talking to ellis about the lyrics for this album which are very very as you said like very nerdy very yeah <laughs> it's a sci-fi story basically nice. yeah. and like um but are you getting is this like I want to know about your background with like this is this, is this from like reading comic books from watching movies from reading novels where does this from reading like novels oh okay yeah i i like read a lot um i it's weird that i never got into comic books because like all the exhumed dudes are all into comic books and shit and uh but i never got into comic books for, but i read like a lot i read i mean when i say i read a lot it feels like a lot for for me but it, you know i read like 20 something books a year oh, um uh, big thick sci-fi novels and shit like that i also read like i kind of have to have a thing where i have do like a sci big sci-fi novel and then i have to read like a biography or something like a palate cleanser so it's like okay. I'll, i mean i've read like you know books from dudes i don't give a fuck about like the dude from rat like you know <laughs> steven pierce yeah i've read his book i was like yeah you know fucking it's like i just got i gotta like get the sci-fi like i just I, I, I won't enjoy it as much if i don't fucking just take a break from it so gotcha. um so every other book will be like a a biography like some rockers fucking biography and you know dude uh, I but yeah the, tons of sci-fi books yeah i do the same thing like uh for some reason i feel very like uh dragged to like autobiographies i'll read anyone's okay. autobiography like, yeah same like, yeah man <laughs> have you have you read the no effects one no not yet i'm sure now, now dude, that's on the list <laughs> yes that, that that's gonna that's it's is and that it's like not the fat like, Mike story or something? It's all of them together. It's like okay. uh, the four original, and I believe the four OG members, and they're all still, it's like an autobiography. It's all intertwined and really well, like, written. Gotcha. And it's not what you expect, because there's a lot of, like, death and drama. And so it's not all no, just, like, farts. Poppy and, happiness. And yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, I got yeah. the impression you're more on the, like, sci-fi novel. Um, yeah and yeah. movies too like i, I watched in, t in tv you know like I, i've read the entire expanse series before the expanse tv show came out and mm -hmm. i mean it's not all done yet but yeah it's, i'm i'm at book eight and there's in the ninth book comes out this year sometime and so i it's funny because like i'm watching the expanse and like talk about it with friends of mine some some friends of mine who just started they're like the show kind of sucks i was like yeah it's funny because of the book this part of the book sucks too. So it's like, it's like the first three are fucking great. The third, the second three are bad. And then the last three are like pretty decent. <clears throat> and so we're getting into the last three stuff now, but like we're, we just got through the middle three with the Marco Inaro story and like, oh, so boring. So fucking boring. <laughs> Dude, what do you find is like best for you to read? Is it at night? Before yeah, I read usually just before I go to bed. I, it, well, I, in in a pandemic yeah i read just before i go to bed uh but like you know when i was traveling a lot like i would go to la all the time and um you know for work and for band stuff and like you know being on a plane is a perfect time to just get through a book you know i, yeah. I like travel in a in a van like in a in a plane whatever like when i'm traveling i tend to read a lot too it also makes me sleepy like i i, I really like reading but like you know it knocks me out too so it's like i i sleep a lot and like especially if i'm in a van you know 
some people call it time traveling where you fucking get in the van and then you knock out and then you wake up at your destination you're like oh shit well, we're here <laughs> exactly you know, <laughs> and have you have you made the jump from to ebook or you still keep it open? yeah yeah I, I play, I, i'm uh fully with my kindle like i, I don't okay. There are, you know, like my father's like a total purist. He he would never in a million, like I I think I bought him two Kindles by accident. And he's just kind of like, he, you know, he'd be like, thank you. And then like kind of later on, he'd be like, how's that Kindle? He's like, ah, I haven't even turned it on. Like, I, you know, he's, he's just an old school book reader, yeah. book reader. <laughs> you, know? you need to like, you just need that. Like next time you give him the third Kindle, you give him. <laughs> make sure you like rub an old book on it so it has that old book smell, you know? <laughs> yeah right yeah, so it smells on. all musty and shit <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> dude okay great let's talk a bit about um your jump from because you lived in california for the longest time and you moved yeah. to portland oregon uh, a couple of years ago why the jump yeah. Uh, I mean, so me and my wife were looking at, we were trying to buy a house in LA and the LA housing market was like, I'm not trying to like, this would have been way out of our budget. I'm not trying to brag, but like, we were looking at like houses that were a half million dollars that were fucking shitholes. Wow. And I was like, man, this fucking sucks. Like we, we, I remember like, you know, we were, we, we would see a house and be like, like, we, we had two requirements. She definitely needed an office. I kind of wanted an office, but for me, it was like, you know, I could, at the time I didn't have the studio stuff. So I was just like, you know, it didn't really matter. Um, but uh, so, you know, we had to have like at least two rooms and, you know, kind of separated. Cause I, I, I do, I did, I do have my computer and I play video games and shit too. So, uh, it, which is loud as hell. And so, um, so, you know, we had these, these kind of minimal requirements. We wanted to have three bedrooms. Uh, so we would have a bedroom and then each of us have an office. And then like my office would also be like a guest room if we had people visiting from out of town or whatever. Um, and it's like, man, we just saw so many houses that were so, that had, it would be like, you go in there, it'd be like three bedrooms, but it'd be like, it would be, it would really be two bedrooms, but somebody put a wall in the middle of one of the bedrooms. So it's like two six yeah. by six foot jail cells in there and you'd be like dude fuck this place you know um so it's it just too expensive i remember the last house that we saw when we finally decided to look elsewhere was like we we were like i guess i don't hate it like it's okay but then yeah. we got we walked out of the house and this fucking helicopter circling three houses down and we we're just like fuck man yeah. So I was like, my my work my day job like they opened an office in portland and they were like uh, I basically we were opening a data center and back then I was managing data centers and they're like if you want to come up and manage the Portland data center that's an option and so that's what we were just like fuck it we looked at we nice. kept flying up here we bought a house and then just moved up here and I'm, I, there's a lot of things I miss about LA there's you know the food is better there and there's more of it um, and stuff like that and, and Portland's kind of a little whitewashed a bit like it's okay. you know it's not a very diverse kind of place for, for food and for anything else either but um but it's not the worst place i've ever been so it's 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 nice it's kind of it's it's a little small townish for me like i like cities and stuff uh, okay yeah i i can kind of relate because i did a similar thing um i was looking at houses in to buy in the city of madrid and it was just money wise it didn't make any sense uh sure. i wanted like so I, I'm, I'm like 30 kilometers, which is not bad at all, away from the city. And like, I have like, there's a lot of nature. Like I can take awesome walks with my dog. The house is That's right. pretty big. So like bottom line, like, yeah, I was just thinking like, I just want a really cool house. If I need to like do the long drive, that's fine. I just want like a really comfortable yeah. where I can just like, where I barely have neighbors. I don't know what your situation's like, <laughs> you know, like, so... Um, we have neighbors, but it's it's very chill around here. Yeah, like, you can we, blast music, right? Yeah, they're like, I and you know, because we live so close to everybody in LA, and I'm always wondering because our neighbors are very friendly. Like on the day we moved in, they just showed up and like, hey, here, you know, here's a directory of everybody in the neighborhood. It's their email address, their phone number, their address. Wow. You know, if you ever need, yeah, and like they we, they have they throw two parties a year where everybody goes from like house to house and shit. It's very leave it to beaver here in the best possible way. 
Um, but yeah, yeah wow. it was, it, but I, so I'm always asking them like, you know, when we first moved in, I'm like, is it too loud here? Like, cause you know, I would play my guitar through like my stack of amps and shit here. Right. And they'd be like, I didn't even know you were doing that shit over there. So I was like, oh my God, this is fucking amazing. Perfect. We got trees yeah. and shit, you know, so sort of separating us. So yeah, it's great. Fuck yeah. Dude, something, every time I hear Portland, Oregon, like um, something comes to mind, um, which is the movie Green Room. Have you seen that movie? No, I haven't seen it. Uh-huh. Did that take place in Portland? Yes. I believe No so. shit, really? Yeah, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah. It's oh, just about, I got, I got um, know. yeah, man, it's fucking, the premise without spoiling anything is a punk band showing up at a squat and it's full of uh, Nazi skinheads. So that's, right. yeah. I've, yeah, I've seen, I mean, I've seen the trailer and stuff and it's, it's one of the ones that like, <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't know how I haven't seen it yet, honestly, yeah. like I, I'm just fucking. So now I got, okay, so after I finished the book I'm reading right now, I got no effects. And then <laughs> as soon as I'm off this call, I got green room. So, there you go. <laughs> so I'm making lists in my head right now. And I, so, I got chaos ramen bar, so. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> if you come out here, we're, we're definitely going there. Like, you'll, Fuck yeah. you'll fucking, yeah. Dude, for <laughs> sure. That's, um, yeah, if, whenever COVID goes away, that's, like, my big thing is, like, road trips with my girlfriend. So definitely. That's awesome. We'll be we'll be in touch if that if we're able to yeah absolutely come and come and stay here we'll fucking we'll do a ramen tour or whatever Fuck yeah dude <laughs> dude so um next I want to talk about um your time in Exhumed I know you're still great friends with Harv Harv um has become a great friend of mine throughout the years he just guested on our latest album so that's fucking nice. cool. And um, yes, I saw that actually. Yeah. Yeah, dude. So, um, have you? I know you've been, um, yeah, on and off with Exum. Yeah. And um, just tell me a bit about those years. Like, I, I think you cherish <laughs> them a lot, right? Like, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was like, so when I first met those guys, I was playing in my local band, which was called Infanticide. We were the only band in Pinole, California, and we're a death metal band. Um, so we were playing, and, and by the way, Pinole, California is also where Possessed is from. So there's that little nice. weird um, factoid. But uh, and, and and also another little weird fact is when I left Infanticide to join Exhumed, the guitar player from Possessed, Mike Toreo, played in Infanticide for a minute before they split up. Nice. Um, but anyway, uh, so Infanticide starts playing shows, started getting a demo out. We started meeting people. You know, we had seen, I'd seen Exhum a few times opening up for bigger bands. Um, you know, I thought, I thought Exhum was like this big band. I didn't realize that they were just like these local dudes, like from San Jose. To me, like at the time from Pinal, which is like around Berkeley, um, to San, San Jose is like probably like an hour drive, 45 minutes or something. That seemed like a really far fucking way to go. So I was like, to me, like San Jose, I thought San Jose might have even been in like Southern California. It's absolutely not. Um, but it was, uh, mm-hmm. you know, so anyway, so we start, I think we played on a radio show and some like Harv was there and I think Ross was there. And um, I'm, I, man, some of the details are a little fuzzy, but I think I got Ross's number or something. And, you know, we started talking them, you know, start talk, talking to Harv all the time, too. And we made like plans like, OK, you can, you know, you drive down to San Jose, stay on Harv's floor. We'll hang out. Um, you know, we just would go fuck around and see movies and shit. And like we went out to the first thing we ever did was we all went to Magic Mountain. Nice. Uh, we, we, like, we like drove out to Magic Mountain uh, from San Jose, I think. So it was like a road trip. So I got to know those guys like really well on that road trip. Uh, and I was really shy and fucking, you know, uh, but, it, and they were not at all. So <clears throat> for me, it was like, you know, like meeting these guys who were like, you know, um, kind of like more, more friend, like the guys that I was hanging out with uh, were a little more like kind of small town guys and like yeah. fucking, you know, those guys were a little more like loud. They were out and proud about their nerdiness and their Star Wars shit and fucking. <laughs> um so it was cool to meet those guys and so we started hanging out a lot and then like at some point i was at ross's house and daryl their guitar player um so i had already filled in for them once like i played a show because daryl couldn't make it and then daryl was had called up ross or he called up matt to to cancel another show and then 
Matt called Ross and I'm sitting in Ross's room and like Ross is like Matt wants to talk to you and like so like I get on the phone and Matt's like hey you're in Exum and I was like oh all right and then okay. like gave Ross the phone back and I was and I was like what happened I was like I think we're kicking out Daryl and I was like okay oh sick all right so then it was like I had to move down to fucking San Jose and um that didn't go I was there for like a year and a half but I was I, it was the first time I moved out of my house so I was like I moved in with Marissa from Creton and um, I didn't know about paying rent and shit. Like that's, that was all like a foreign concept to me uh, at the time. So it was literally <laughs> the first time I'd ever been out of the house. So uh, I missed like the first month of rent with Marissa. And then, um, and then on second month came around and in the middle of the month, she's like, where's your fucking money at? And I was like, what money? Oh, uh, I'll get, and she's like, you know what, just save it. You got to get out. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, I moved in with these like Polish guys I was working with. It was super weird. And I moved, I just bounced around from like, couches and shit for like a year or two. And, um, but anyway, uh, central to the story is I started playing with Exhum, then I was out of Exhum. And then, like, uh, at some point, um, I was working at Necropolis Records with Harv, and he was like, Sean from Impaled was going to play bass on this Exhum tour. It was exhumed Hate Eternal Mayhem. And um, and it was Mayhem's first time in the States ever. And uh, or no, no, not the first time ever, but their first national tour of the States. And Dude, so uh, sorry, okay, let me cut let yeah. me cut you off for one second. Just because yeah. you did such a great Shane impression with Florida. <laughs> if, you, yeah. if you could do Harv impression uh, once in a while, yeah. that would while telling the story, <laughs> I'll be yeah. happily appreciated. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Harv, Harv turned to me at Necropolis. He's like, "Ah, shot's not gonna go, so you're gonna play bass." And I was like, "All right." Um, so, so that's how I, I ended up playing bass in Exhum, and, and um, that was the second time I was in Exhum. That was like yeah. 2003. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. That was like '99. That was before. That was my first tour, actually. Um, and then Impale did some tours, and then so I was still in Impale, but yeah, so I, <laughs> I played bass uh, with Exhum. And fucking, um, uh, yeah, and then like, you know, anytime like Harv needed somebody to fill in, I was just like, yeah, do this happen like in 2020, he was like, hey, Ross can't, Ross can only do this tour or this tour. So Ross is gonna go on the, the Australian Japanese tour because he's never been to Australia. Mm -hmm. He's like, I need you to cover the tour uh, in the, in the bought a new bass and like bought a you know like a bass amp and shit and i was like yeah fuck it dude, let's fucking do this shit i'm ready to go and then COVID happened so i was like oh fuck and i spent all this money on this shit but it's like i needed a new bass for the studio anyway but shit, you know, so so yeah. this, right so your time in exhumed you were also doing backing vocals right yeah mm -hmm. okay nice yeah, I was like, it, yeah, on the record that I did, I did all the low vocal and on on uh, All Guts, No Glory, I did all the low vocals on that. Um, and Matt, like that's, you know, when I, I've used that as kind of like my, my vocal resume a little bit um, because Matt, like really, like my vocals tend to be kind of more mid-rangey, barky, like Jason Netherton-y. <laughs> and um, like Matt was like, no, nah, you got to go lower. And I was just like, this is really fucking hard. <laughs> you know just fucking do it super low and like he's like it's got to be lower dude because that's like the exhumed thing it's like fucking really high high vocals and really low low vocals and uh it's it came out like it fucking ruined my throat but like because we had to i we ended up tracking all the vocals and like simon relax buddy um, can we see simon yeah <laughs> <laughs> This is my old boy. He's 16. Yo, he's almost 17. Wow. I've wow. had him forever. Beauty. <laughs> Does Simon know Harv? Yes. Yeah. Simon knows everybody. Every every band that's ever been and like Simon is the he just will jump in your lap and just fucking start purring and just will cuddle right up. So he's a total, he's like the most social, he's more social than I am. He's fucking <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, you know, it's Fuck, I forgot what I was talking about. But yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna play bass again. Oh yeah, so so the vocal thing. So yeah, so Harv like really pushed me on the vocals. He's just like, you gotta go lower, man. So it's like I, when I was doing them, like in my head, you know how your voice sounds different in your head, and it sounds different through a mic, and it's it always sounds different. Uh, but then like you know, 
hearing it played back, I was like, fuck, this sounds great, dude. And it's like, I, I started like kind of really working on my vocals a lot more and like trying to, trying to be comfortable playing and doing vocals. That's fucking hard. <laughs> yeah, man. Dude. So yeah. Yeah. The, the, the backing vocals on all oh, that's no glorious fucking great. dude. And Thanks, cause man. you also did a uh, gore metal. Uh, I did. I did like gang. I was in like the gang vocals on gore metal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Garage days, slaughter cult. Is that it? I think I did the low, all the low vocals on garage day, garbage days. Okay. Did I do? All of yeah, I did. I think I did do almost all the low vocals on garbage days. Man, I haven't listened. I have not heard that fucking record since it came out. Um, and we did a tour around it. That was that was fun, but fuck, it's been a long time. <laughs> That's too bad the, the 2020 touring plans fall through. Yeah, that would have been really fun. I, I think it would have been rad. I haven't done like a, a full national tour, like a full 30 day tour in, I've done a lot of like 10 day tours and like, you know, long weekends and shit like that in the last like, you know, like six, seven years or whatever. But, but yeah, full 30 day tour. I haven't done one of those in a while. And I was, I was really looking forward to it when you're when you were in the band was dylan already involved no i didn't meet dylan until like 2000 2010 okay. um when when we got back together we did all guts no glory um we played one of our first shows back together was at the maryland death fest and me, Hammy, and Dylan and Harv all split a room. And that was the first time I met Dylan. And he kind of wasn't, he was, he's Hamilton's like, like bestie, I think. And um, he kind of, he wasn't really involved in the band yet, but he's like such a great guy yeah. that I think that they were just like, they would have, they were just like, I mean, his stick is now like integral to exhume i think but like 100%. i think that they were just like we just want to be around this dude like let's just have him fucking be in the he is so fucking like he's got the most understated funny like he's like really really understated like super dry i remember like one of the first things he told me <clears throat> he was like if i was a vegetarian like why would i eat fake chicken like why don't they make fake dinosaur meat or something like i'd <laughs> rather eat fake t-rex or something and i was like he just said it with like such a straight face in a way funnier than that but like i was just like it took me a second but i was like yes that's also but that, that's fucking hilarious <laughs> that's such yeah yeah his sense of humor is fucking spot on and and the whole creative aspect he's brought to exhumed because um a couple of years ago that i stayed at his place and he he showed me his his garage with like all of the chainsaws all of the micro <laughs> all of like the guts, got, like, collection yeah, all of the heads <laughs> how he told me how he made all of this shit it was fucking great dude and that's um, awesome <laughs> yeah dude so um all right let's talk a bit about uh your short run in nails um so that Indian, was that Indianapolis, that show you told me, the last one? Maybe it was like Lincoln, Nebraska. Fuck, where the fuck was I don't know. It was somewhere in the middle of the U.S. that nobody goes to. All right. so, <laughs> so like, <clears throat> was that the last new show ever or they kept on playing shows? They played one more show without me. Uh, they played the Decibel thing um in december of 2019 that's that was the last nail show i the my show was the one the one dude so I, I was out in october 2019 and then that shows in december of 2019 they played one more show without me as, as a three-piece with like the original lineup right and um yeah because first news i got of like the sort of breakup was uh your conversation i heard with with Ellis, and now it seems like like the the rest of the guys are out. It seems like Todd's reforming the band. And yeah, um, it's, yeah, it sounds like he's putting together a new band. Right, and um, maybe I, I mean I, I honestly don't. I haven't talked to Todd since October 2019 either, so I, I don't <laughs> really know. And um, what's it like working with those guys? Because I'm a go ahead. What's it like working with those guys with Todd <laughs> with Taylor? It it was weird because like for me a lot a big part of the touring is like hanging out with like people and you know um 
is like the social aspect of it. Like that's 100%. that's like for sure that is like for me that is like part and parcel to playing the show. Like I I I you know there there would be days not every day of course but like there would be days where I'd rather skip the show and just fucking hang out with everybody that's there and whatever you know like the the show is always is fun and the shows all the nail shows were were almost universally big so they they were good but but those guys don't like they don't hang out and so that was for me that was very weird like like we would the show would be over and we would get in the van and start driving to the next place and it's like is very that was very in in only me and John drank so Taylor doesn't drink right. Todd would drink a little bit here and there but um so it it was kind of weird like so me and me and John just instantly buddied up and like we would go find like we would sound check and then go find a bar um and then like you know if I had friends in that city or whatever I'd call them up and you know try to get some hang time in or whatever but um but yeah, it was weird too, because a lot of my friends would not go to nail shows. Like they were just like, I don't like that band, I'm not into what they're about. And so uh, good luck to you, my friend, but I'm not, I won't see you tonight. Um, so um, right, so, so there was so, some of that too, which, you know. <laughs> okay, well, well, and um, yeah, so a lot of uh, staring at the phone in the van. Yeah, a lot of that. Like I. I mean, I'm I'm a sleepy dude in general, but man, I I fucking probably slept like I don't know, like 16 hours a day on nails tour. <laughs> so you know, it was just like it's, I I would just it's, also because when I get into a van, I'm like I've spent so much time in vans, like it makes me really drowsy. Like if I can, I don't I don't know if I should ever be allowed to drive a fucking vehicle ever again because I get inside of moving vehicle, I'm just like. <laughs> I start fucking passing out, man. So, um, so yeah, so not a lot of hanging out with my friends and shit. And, uh, you know, there was like some internal shit with the band too, or, you know, I'm not going to air out all the dirty laundry or whatever, but like, you know, there's people in the band, like having issues with each other. And it's just weird for me because it, for, for me, the, like the friendship of a band is like, kind of like, uh, the only band I'd ever been out with where I didn't know the dudes beforehand other than Nails was Phobia. And, but Phobia was like, you know, they, again, the van, there's, there's one guy in the van that I, I didn't care for as much, but, um, but everybody else in the van, like we would hang right. out. It was like, you know, it was important to do the hanging out and meeting people and fucking, yeah. you know, so I met tons of people doing that, but uh, with Nails, like there would sometimes just be this raw tension in the van and backstage and shit and it's like man i'm gonna have to just fucking go entertain myself so just you know or me and john would just be like let's just go find a bar fuck it like we're just yeah, gonna post go. up somewhere and do that shit so <laughs> you know well i'm sure a maybe, weird, interesting band to be in okay well i'm sure maybe maybe if you would have stayed in the band you would have gotten a lot of sci-fi reading out of the way you know <laughs> <laughs> i mean i was in the band for like for like four years i guess like it was oh, i didn't realize it was that long okay yeah like it, it was i mean it feels quick because almost like every long tour that like we had a tour that was booked with at the gates and behemoth in europe that would have been like in small stadiums and coliseums and shit okay. and like like they're all the big tours like all the big 30-day tours that we ever had booked got canceled um, so it's like, it, it didn't feel like I played that many shows then because there was a lot of like, you know, seven day tours, 10 days here and shit like that. So it's, and then, and I also lived up here and the rest of those guys live in LA. So it was like, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't see them or hang out with them very much, uh, outside of nails business, you know? Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so let's close the nails chapter. I want to ask sure. you <laughs> when we can look forward to. Well, first of all, I want to, I, I get the impression, like, one of your babies is Impaled. Like, it's. Yeah, so, so Impaled is, is a weird one, because that, that's, that is something that's very near and dear to me, and that those guys are also, like, I mean, I'm as, I'm, I've known Sean probably longer than anybody, mm -hmm. um, like, he's one of the first dudes I met when I moved to the Bay Area. I met him like a couple of years after I had lived in the Bay Area or something like that. And so we've been friends for, and, and I mean, I met Shaw, I met like Harv and Ross, like 
and Cole, and then like shortly, shortly thereafter. So all about the same time, but but Sean like a little longer than anybody. Um, so you know, these are like some of my very oldest and best friends. Right. Uh, Sean was the officiant at my wedding. Ross was my best man. Um, you know, uh, Raul was one of my groomsmen. Fucking Harv was one of my groomsmen. Um, you know, right. the, the it was like a whole <laughs> right. family thing. Um, so, but impaled is like there is very little activity there because of a, a certain other band that you may know yes. that is very active. And so they don't have a whole lot of time with that, uh, which is fine. Like it's like every now and again, we get together and sort of make half-assed plans to, you know, like let's write an album. And then either Sean or Ross is like pretty much like, they're like, nah, I don't know. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> Not feeling then, but then like yeah me and Raul will be like fuck it we'll write this record and like we'll just make them play on it or something <laughs> and then like we don't do it either so it's it's like the laziest All fucking right. band ever <laughs> but we, we've been coasting on the dead shall dead remain for fucking like I don't know for goddamn near 30 fucking years or 20 22 years or whatever so so whenever somebody gets you know we we, we get booked every now and again we were actually supposed to we were supposed to play maryland last year then this year and now now we're supposed to play next year um and then we just play dead shall dead remain dead shall dead remain and then we you know we've been trying to get in some of the other impaled songs like the, but it's we're all so lazy that it's like i'm totally willing to learn the other songs but they're just kind of like eh, it's fine <laughs> nobody cares and it's like okay all right I, I mean this for me is just an excuse to fly to baltimore and fucking get wasted with your you bros guys. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, that that sounds like the perfect fit just like you all get along great like super good friends from the start and you just yeah, yeah whatever let's play this let's not record this whatever yeah, so easy <laughs> all right sounds good yeah and yeah. it's, I mean, it's fun. It's, and it's like, yeah, it's, it's, those songs are so like second nature to all of us now that it's like, right. I mean, I'm not saying we always play them perfectly. We certainly don't, but, um, and I, I'll, I will forget entire fucking songs worth of lyrics. I'll be like, looking at my phone, I'll like try to like pull it up. Like, I'll like walk behind an amp and be like, oh, fuck, I don't remember how this <laughs> fucking song goes at all. Um, or I'll just be like, <laughs> I'll be, I fucking just like, whatever um but yeah it's it's primarily about you know the five of us hanging out so nice nice um that's good that's that's good to see like the the contrast between maybe what you had with nails and what you have with impaled so that's fucking cool yeah, yeah. and it's uh, it's different but and i i definitely prefer the you know i i'm not i'm totally like I'm down for the adventure. Like I will, I was going to play with another band last year, also a bit of guys that I had never met before. Um, well, one guy I knew, I already knew, and then the rest of the guys I didn't know. But, um, um, you know, that obviously fell through, but it's like, I'm, I'm up for the adventure, man. I'm into fucking, like, you know, I'm into getting in the van and, and finding out what's going on and fucking doing it. So I don't, I don't want to say like, you know, I would never do something with like the nail such a get HN. I would absolutely do that again. I just, yeah. you know, just I don't know if I would do, I wouldn't do nails again, but I would, uh, I would absolutely get in, in the van with people I don't know. <laughs> and can you say what, what, can you say what band that was you're talking about or you can't say it? Uh, I, I don't, I, you know, I never really discussed it with them because, but the band was as Cadaver from Norway. Um, oh, okay. they, nice. they were, it, it was just for this, like a, a run in the States. Um, so I, I, you know, I don't want to like, I, I hope I'm not stepping on their toes by saying anything about it, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, they have a new album out. Of course they want to tour it. Uh, I know the drummer and he asked me if I would, you know, if I would fill in. So, um, nothing crazy. It didn't happen. So okay. I, I would love for it to happen, but you know, we'll see. Nice. So let's, let's talk about the next band I want to talk about, which I think is, yeah, it's the last one is, um, I want to know if there's any murder construct stuff in the works. So a couple of years ago, um, I I feel like I posted something on the murder construct page and it kind of set off this like flurry of activity. And so I kind of felt like up until then, I felt like, you know, people didn't give a shit about murder construct. And like, I mean, we were dropped by relapse. 
they they clearly did not like the record um and so which you know that's their prerogative um it's not like a big deal but like i felt like kind of just demoralized about it i was like ah fuck it you know nobody likes this band Mm-hmm. Um, and then Travis would tell me every now and again, he'd be like, people ask me about murder construct all the time. Like, you know, I'll be at a cattle show and people would be like, what's going on with murder construct. And I'm like, yeah, that's just people being nice, you know, like, or, or whatever, or just like trying to make conversation with, cause they want to talk to you. They don't give a fuck. I don't think about murder, construct. but, but it kept happening over and over again. And then we started getting mail at the murder construct Facebook page and shit. And, uh, just people asking like, what's going on with you guys and shit. And, and so I was like, well, fuck it. I'll, let, let's try, right? So I wrote, um, we had a couple of songs that never came out, like that would have been for record number two. We actually had like six songs for the second record. Um, I forgot almost all of them because uh, we haven't played them. But so I was like, okay, I have, I have a couple songs from back then. And then I wrote a new song. Um, and then like, I just got busy with the studio and kind of put it to the side, but I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to say that there's not anything happening, but there, there kind of isn't, but I would <laughs> like to do, okay. I would like to do more murder constructs. I just didn't know that people liked it. Now that, now that I kind of get hit up, I mean, not by like tons of people or anything, but like every now and again, you know, like a dude on Instagram will be like, Hey, do you guys have patches like murder construct? I'm like, Holy shit. I have. A fucking thousand of them that I never sold that have just been sitting here in my fucking attic, get collecting dust. I gotta fucking like pull that shit down and put it up on the site and get rid of it. But I ended up like donating tons of our merch to like a friend of mine, Rusty Reams. He was um, he put together this thing for like a homeless shelter, I think, and was like, if bands have, if you guys have merch and shit that you're trying to get rid of, like he's like, I'll take it as a donation. I donated like. I don't know, like 20 fucking murder constructions. So there's going to be, yeah. So there's like a homeless shelter out there with a bunch of dudes of fucking <laughs> end of an error shirts and shit. And, <laughs> nice. you know, murder construct shirts. So, you know, fuck it. At least somebody's wearing it. There you um, go, dude. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so yeah. So I, I guess the short answer is I, I, I do want to get back into it. I'm having a little trouble with motivation just because uh, I'm a little gun shy because it was like, it was like the same one was like building and building and building and then the record came out and nobody liked it and then all of a sudden it was like fucking nobody cared so and why you know. why do you say that um what gave you the impression that relapse didn't like it uh so they for sure didn't like the mix they were like this mix is off um and so they're like they floated the idea of having like a big name guy like remix it and we're like yeah fuck it let's do it and um and then they were like yeah never mind and then like i noticed like the the month it came out there was like one at like a third of a page ad in decibel where it was like you know it had the record and then the next like it was in the next decibel as like a fucking little tiny icon at the bottom okay. and then it was gone so it was like they, they it didn't get any advertising like they didn't they didn't I don't want to speak for them and like i'm still friends with the relapse guy so it's there's no hard feelings there but it's like they, they definitely didn't push it and that's you know and then they and then they're like yeah you guys aren't doing anything so we're just gonna drop you so we're just like well fuck <laughs> like, <laughs> i guess that's that <laughs> well hopefully one day you know like it seems like it, it might happen you know it seems like you you all yeah. are invested in it so that's last last year i remixed the record and put it out um on just on digital only it's on spotify uh, right yeah yeah it's on spotify the the results redux so i, I remixed it um it's funny because you know when you work in a studio it's like <laughs> i hear things even though that was only from last year i'm already like fuck i should have done this different and this different and this because you, know, you learn so much every fucking month that it's like right. you know it's like oh it would sound a thousand times better if i put it out today but whatever it sounds better than it did well it so. sounds great so i thought it was a remaster but no it's a remix remix yeah okay okay so the 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 original so it's not totally the guy who the guy who mixed it in the first place sean great friend of mine like he, he like his while we were there like it was like his girlfriend was like it was like any day baby's gonna be born <laughs> so we were like fucking uh, like oh shit like 
Are you trying to get my attention? <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, it, it cut off for a second, but no, it's all oh, good. Okay. All good. Uh, okay. Uh, so yeah. so it was like, um, you know, uh, he was like, and then like the baby was actually born the very last day of mixing. Um, so he, you know, he had other shit on his spine. He normally does great production. He uh-huh. he does. If you've heard the DIS records, um, I he did all those. Haven't. I haven't. They're good. They're good. And he does great production. He's done a bunch of stuff in LA. Um, but you know, he was a little distracted. His first child was on the way. Right. Um, and, and I'm just, I'm trying to do all this wacky shit. You know, I, I like quad track the guitars. There's like four, there's four rhythm guitars. There's four performances. And then like, I wanted to duplicate all those tracks and then run some of them through like an HMT. And so there's like, at any given time, there's like fucking like 16 guitars on that record so it's it's, i mean i was just like pushing him to do all this like really stupid shit and fucking so that's why it sounds bad it's it's partly my fault and he was like you know he was distracted and and i'm okay i want to get a fucking dude with a sitar in here to do this part i want to get like (laughs) i want to get an air who and like a fucking saws and like sarangi on the last song like all these you know instruments that are like if you've never recorded them before it's hard to figure out what right. the best way to do it is, you know? So, um, yeah, I totally get the impression. This is definitely another one of your babies, you know? Yeah. I wrote most of the music, not all of it, but like probably like 75% of, of almost a hundred percent of the EP. And then like most of the record, except for the first song on the second side, which is the, I think is the best song record of uh, the one, one that I didn't write that Kevin wrote. And then Caleb wrote a song. Kevin wrote two songs and Caleb wrote a song. And then I wrote the rest of them. So that was, it was, yeah, it was kind of my vanity fucking project. So, Fuck yeah. You know. Hopefully it'll, it'll be back one day. Yeah. Yeah, we'll Dude. see. I don't know. I, I want to do it. So. And is there, um, we've covered a lot of bands. Uh, <laughs> is there anything else worth mentioning we, we, we didn't hit upon? You want to mention? Band wise. Um, Yeah, uh, probably, but <laughs> like, we didn't really talk about Intronaut uh, very much, but that was, um, that was, yeah, we, we got through the Emory as well. That was a, like a departure band for me. That was something I was kind of bored with playing Death and Grind. So I did that for a while. Um, How long was that? How long was your run? I was in Intronaut from like 2004 until 2000. Eight, I think, something like oh. that, or two thousand seven, some, 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 somewhere in there. Um, and what happened? Was, Why did you take separate paths? That was, I. So first and foremost, like uh, I can admit to it now, I was like I was having trouble playing some of that stuff. I had never really, I mean, I I had written odd time music before unintentionally, um, but I had not really like you know, counting in my head was not something that I was like that familiar with and being like, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, you know, Mm -hmm. and like playing with a really metronomic drummer and, you know, like just kind of have like, for me at the time, it's like, it was less fun than I wanted it to be. Like, I I was like, you know, like I said, I like hanging out is equally as important to me as fucking playing the show. Um, and I was just having trouble with it. And so I started kind of being a dick and like, like missing practice and I wasn't really practicing at home. And so I wasn't getting any better at it. And like, instead of just like manning up and quitting, I just kind of like, just got shittier until they were like, dude, you're out. <laughs> so, which I mean, I, I fully deserve, uh, I, if, I mean, if I was in that band today, it would be a hundred percent different, but like, you know, uh, at the t- at the time, it was the right call for them to make. So, okay, so you yeah you reflect that and now and you totally get it. I've I've seen that happen <laughs> in bands a lot where they yeah. like one member will just like yeah I'm gonna rot here until you guys <laughs> kick me out. You know? Yeah, yeah, that was kind of how it was. And like I started having like kind of an antagonistic relationship with with uh, the other guys, where it's like, you know, I was like just being a, I was just being a fucking dick like I, I don't know I, when I first moved to LA I was like such a different person like I was just really like 
I was trying to like be like so like so, I'm basically a fucking punisher like just being a dick all the time and like I, I, I thought it was like hilarious to just be like a totally shitty person and then like you know it wasn't until way later that I realized like oh nobody likes that it's fucking like it's, and, and I didn't like it either I was like I was like you know I thought I, I was like god why am I like this and it's just because it's just really insecure and just being right. a fucking asshole then you settled down you bought a house Married, yeah you know i mean i settled down before that but yeah but then i literally settled down like yeah, yeah i got a wife and four cats and <laughs> you know <laughs> so yeah okay but yeah but I, I feel like you're really proud of those records right you did with internet i love that that first internet record fucking void is like i don't usually tend to listen to, to stuff that i was on that much but i still listen to void every now and again like i'll bust that this is really different for me and it was really like very interesting uh you know some of the stuff like you know we had disagreements about like how stuff would go musically and shit and then um you know it was like kind of like some of that some of the the problems were that I couldn't let go of that like I was like I was like I want to do stuff my way and it's just like not an adult way to work fucking with other musicians right um but I do think that that record for all of the kind of like back and forth that we had like the kind of like, I don't want to do it this way. Let's do it this way. Like, and then other guys would be like that too. Like, no, this is fucking my thing. We're doing it my way. And I was like, all right, fuck it. Uh, like it came out better for that. So like having like those, those disagreements, not, not all being like totally on the same page with each other made that a better record. Gotcha. I think and I really, really like that record. I like the production. I like the songs. Like it's a fucking, it's a really good, like, saying that as an outsider i guess like not just because i was i'm really proud of that record for sure so void's your favorite then void yeah yeah okay. no was like um no was us sasha wrote almost all of null i think we did i think the last song on on null we did together but i think the first three were like were like songs that Sasha put together himself. Like he he definitely sent us a like a demo with like a drum machine and shit. And like then and we learned his songs. And then we kind of added to him. So maybe maybe there's like two songs on all that were we kind of collaborated on. But for the most part, he was it was kind of like his vision. But Void was like all four of us. Like even the drummer would be like would send us fucking. He'd be like, here's a beat. Like try to write something over this, and just it would be like a super fucked up beat and be like, dude. I don't know. Like, all right, fuck. And like, again, you have to be like counting all weird. Like, okay, this one's in seven, then it's an eight, then it's a nine, and then it's in fucking five. And it's like, okay, that's weird. Uh, but you know, you make this work. Like, you figure out where the accents are. It's really like I learned a lot about music in that band yeah. too. And that's kind of where, uh, you know, I started realizing like, wow, I'm, like for having been playing guitar for like twenty some fucking years back then like I'm not as good as I should be and so I should fucking take some lessons and fucking get over my ego and fucking you know just do this shit <laughs> dude that's such an interesting way of writing the first come up with the drum part and then everything else after I was talking ah, uh, very weird yeah man I was talking to um Shane from Napalm Death and he told me um they actually did that for the latest record so that no I had shit. never heard that so it's fucking cool yeah man. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's an interesting way to write. It gives you like some boundaries and like, um, you know, it gives you a little bit of structure and then you just kind of have to fill in. And we did that with Murder Construct too. Um, it was like, you know, we would just fucking, you know, get some beats and then be like, fuck, okay, that's cool. Uh, how do I make this sound like, like a, like a natural riff and not just like right. a drum pattern with fucking random notes on it or something, you know? That's cool, man. That's cool. You, you, I, yeah, I feel like you learned a lot from that, that those four years in internet. Yeah. <laughs> You're especially proud sure. of it. Dude, so yeah. before, before we leave, I'm going to let you get back to work because I've had you for <laughs> over an hour and a half. Um, okay. I always end. <laughs> wow, all, really? Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, dude. These go um, so quick, man. I'm always like tripping out about it. Like, I don't do like a ton of po like podcasts and stuff, but like when we do, it's all like, I'm always amazed, like, holy shit, we've been talking for like a, f I don't talk to my parents this long, you know? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I think it's also because, like, 
I came up with this idea of doing this podcast just because I miss maybe that social aspect of going to yeah, shows. Yeah, sure. It's, it's, it's fucking cool to hang out and like get to know you, even though I've been talking my fucking ass off. It's, no, oh, not at all. <laughs> this is what, this is just like, yeah, we're was, watching that shitty Weezer tribute band and we're hanging out at the bar, you know, just like. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, I feel like this is also like, um, it's filling that little void I have, you know, of like just socializing because it's just yeah. my girlfriend, my dog, and my movies. That's it. So right. <laughs> my 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 last question is: I don't know if um, are you into horror films? Like a little bit. Uh, I'm not yeah. like I'm not like I don't know nearly as much about as like the rest, like the Exhumed and Pale guys. Like they, <laughs> right. they, those guys are, are like infinite wells of knowledge of that shit. I'm just kind of like. I saw a fucking Hostel and it made me upset and I haven't watched a whole lot of fucking horror movies since then. You know? Okay, so so feel free to not answer my last question, but it's pretty simple. It's just like, have you seen any cool horror movies lately? It can be new or old or just something that mm. stuck out. You mentioned yeah. Hostel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is, man, what is the last like fucking... Um, I'm trying to think like what, what we've watched that would be in like the horror, maybe more like the thriller. Liz, my wife, she, she'd fucking kill me for saying this, but she doesn't like horror movies at all. So when, when I watch horror movies, like it's by myself generally. Okay. Oh, Get Out was the last like kind of okay. horror movie I saw uh, that I liked. I thought was interesting. Uh, she was on tour. That was cool. um, and so, yeah, I, I watched Get Out was cool. I watched, fuck, I watched a couple other things too because I was like, this is my chance. She's out on tour. I'm going <laughs> to fucking, this is, yeah, I'm going to fucking like binge this shit a little bit, um, catch up. But but I mean, also, like, I, I get where she's coming from because I start getting like, there's a scene in Hostel where a dude, I think, like, reaches his hand under, like, they're in a bathroom and he reaches under that little, like, dividing wall in the toilets and somebody chops his fingers off and fucking that, <laughs> <laughs> like that's not even that crazy that's like for a horror fan that would be like they'd be like but it's What's... cringy it's definitely cringy man. it's just I, things with hands dude i can't do it like oh i'm so fucking worried about my hands like all the time <laughs> like oh, if i lost my hands on my career would be over i'd be such a fucking loser you know and it's like when i saw i was just like oh god i was like no and i had to like turn it off dude <laughs> and, fucking... oh, and it wasn't even that bad that was not even nearly the worst thing that happened in that movie like some dude getting his guts ripped out is like totally fine, but when that dude got his fingers cut off, I was just like, well, of course you can you can relate because your your everything <laughs> your your professional life revolves around your hands. Yeah, for sure. right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Get Out was the last good one I saw. Uh, I haven't seen Midsummer yet. I wanted to check that out. Um, That's cool. these are probably more like psychological thrillers, I guess, yeah, than but, the horror movies, maybe. But no, but uh, I definitely put them in the if you were to go to a video store they would definitely be under the horror section so sure yeah that that yeah that works
that was Malicious Guilt by Murder Construct, but the 2020 mix, not the 2012 mix. I love the guitar work on that song. Pick up that album. Thank you very much for listening or watching. That was my awesome conversation with the sweet and funny Leon del Muerte. Um, if you enjoyed that, please follow him. You can check him out on delmuerte.com. Follow all of his uh, current projects. Record an album at Beastman Audio. Pick up some ramen with this dude. Hopefully at some point in life, I'll be road tripping around Portland and I can pick up some fucking breakfast with this dude because what a great dude. And um, tune in later this month for my conversation with Petro from Implore. What a great dude. Another one of my good, good friends. I love this dude. So um, enjoy. Bye-bye.